There aren't that many high-end tablets nowadays on the Android side. There are very few and in between whenever they come out or announce. But then again, they're Samsung, and you know you could always count on them for something pretty good. Hey guys, John V from Phone Rena here. You're watching our video review of the Samsung Galaxy Tab S2, the 9.7 inch version. There's some good things about the tablet, and of course there are some questions that we have. So let's just talk about the good here first. The first thing that really stands out here is just the thin and lightweight design. Now, when you look at it, it has a design style similar to the Note 4, and that's evident by the subtle metal trim bezel with the uh, matte finish of the back casing. It gives a nice clean look, but what's really impressive is that they've managed to trim off a lot of the fat, so it is exceptionally thin and lightweight. They minimalize the footprint too, and it's pretty compact for a full-size offering, and it's just crazy how lightweight it is. You barely notice it in the hand. And they also employed the new fingerprint sensor to the home button, so it's a lot easier to operate than last year's version. Secondly, you have a better calibrated display, a 9.7 inch 1536 2048 Super AMOLED screen. So there are two specific areas they improved upon. First one being color temperature, it's now closer to 6600 Kelvin, so it gives it a very neutral tone, whereas last year it's a lot more colder. And secondly, it does a better job of accurately reproducing colors in the sRGB color spectrum chart. So it produces some true to life colors. The downside though, is that with the display, you have a lower resolution than last year's model. Now, that's kind of tough because we were hoping to have it the same, but despite that, it's still pretty sharp when you look at it very close. And the other thing is that the brightness output is less this time. So you have 375 nits, which makes it kind of challenging to view outdoors with the sun present. Considering this is Samsung's latest high-end tablet, you'd think that they leveraged the uh, same chipset that they use in the S6 and Note 5, but that's not the case. It's actually powered by an older Exynos 5433 chip with three gigabytes of RAM, the same hardware combination found with last year's Note 4. Now, on one hand, you'd think that wouldn't be enough, but in reality, it's really good because the performance is pretty zippy and snappy. Basic, trivial things are handled in an effortless way. And top of that, it's pretty good with heavy multitasking and even gaming as well. And it puts up some reasonable results in the various benchmark tests. And that processing power really lends itself into the TouchWiz experience. Now this is the same TouchWiz UI experience that we've seen already in the S6 and the Note 5, save for the fact that it doesn't have any of those S Pen features you get with the Note 5's experience. But still, you have classic staple features such as multi-window, you have the pop-up view, and all the various S branded applications. On top of that, Samsung enhanced the side sync feature, so now you could actually have automatic pairing and also be able to transfer files from your smartphone to the tablet and vice versa. And they've also enhanced the reading mode. On the productivity side, it's really nice that it comes preloaded with the Microsoft Office suite of apps. So that includes Word, Office, and uh, PowerPoint. So for a productivity tool, it gets the job done, but again, it doesn't have quite as a deeper set of features that you'd find with the S Pen functionality with the Note 5. Now, it might not be a big thing for people, but it's kind of strange that Samsung decided to go with a lower resolution screen, despite the fact that it's still sharp enough to view in all sorts of conditions, and it's a pretty iridescent screen, and you have all the qualities of a Super AMOLED panel, so you get that deep black color, the wide viewing angles, and with adaptive mode, it enhances the experience. So when you're watching movies, it adjusts the contrast and the color saturation to give us the most ideal uh, experience with the display. But still, it's just kind of uncanny for them to actually step back and go with a lower resolution screen. And it follows in that new trend of not having an IR blaster, which we first saw with the Note 5. So this, should, this is more evidence that Samsung's moving away from offering IR blasters, which is a little bit of a shame because this is meant to be used at the home primarily. And with last year's product, it did offer an IR blaster. So you had direct access to all your home entertainment systems. In making a very svelte tablet and super lightweight and just a smaller footprint, the one compromise they had to do was put in a smaller capacity battery than last year's Galaxy Tab S 10.5. So with this, it does reasonably to get us through a solid one day of normal usage, but in our battery benchmark test, 
it only achieved 6 hours and 46 minutes, which is far shorter than some of its main rivals out there like the iPad Air 2 and some of the other notable Android tablets. So it's not as long lasting as we'd like and there are a bunch of different smartphones that actually beat this. Over on the charge, re charge up time, it takes 263 minutes, which might seem a little bit excessive for a smartphone, but it's pretty fast for a tablet. The speaker supplies on the bottom edge of the tablet, and there are two, and technically it does produce a stronger volume output than its predecessor's speaker set, but unfortunately, it's kind of rather underpowered in tone, so the quality tends to sound a little bit dull and subdued. It leverages the same camera combination that we saw with last year's tablets. That means an 8 megapixel rear camera, and then you have a 2.1 megapixel front facing one. But with the rear camera, they paired it with a wider f1.9 aperture lens. As far as the shooting experience is concerned, it's the same that we've been seeing of late. Nothing really different about it. You have a bunch of different shooting modes and manual controls. With the Pro mode though, they've taken away the ability to adjust the uh, focus and the shutter speed, which is kind of unfortunate, but that's what they did. Now, it takes some decent looking shots, although it has a little bit of difficulty with some high dynamic scenes using the automatic mode. But when you switch over to HDR, it casts a more natural exposure, so highlights and shadows get attention, so they're even out. Uh, under low lighting conditions, it's brighter tone, but the compromise is made in the soft and dull shots. Which, you know, it has some minimalized, minimalizes the uh, noise in the shots, but they don't come out as sharp as we'd like. And as far as the video quality, you have up to quad HD video recording quality. You could utilize the uh, digital zoom to an extent, and it takes some decent looking videos as well. The biggest challenge facing the Galaxy Tab S2 9.7 inch version is competition from its rival, the Galaxy Tab S 10.5. Now this starts out at $500 for the base 32GB Wi-Fi version. You can pick up a 64GB if you want, if you want higher capacity, but it does come with a micro SD card slot, so at least you have expansion there. And they will come out with LTE enabled models in the near future for this one here. But when you think about that the uh, last year's model has been out for over a year, you could pick it up on the cheap compared to this. So go with the Galaxy Tab S2 if you want, if you prefer the thin and light construction. But besides that, if you want more value for your money, you might want to think about going with the Tab S 10.5 because that one had a higher red screen, you have an IR blaster, and for the most part, the same core TouchWiz UI experiences. So there's nothing really drastically different about the two.